Hello, welcome to the Seth and Gentry show with moi, Seth Emerson, and Gentry Estes, Dogs 24 Seth. You didn't say where you worked, I, I guess people are still guessing. Yeah, well, my Twitter feed is just <laughs> my name. I'm just that important. But no, I work for the Macon Telegraph and the Columbus Ledger Inquirer and various <laughs> other places. Um, Gentry, uh, how much do we want to go into this Missouri game? How much do we want to talk about what ultimately unraveled in that game? Hmm. Maybe we I should have discussed that beforehand. I guess we kind of have to. I mean, it, it, the, the easy answer is, I mean, you can talk about turnovers, but the easy answer is the injuries caught up to them on offense. And defensively, they're just not getting any better. And, you know, there's a lot of smaller things that go into it, but I think it, for uh, me that sums it up. The worst case scenario we all knew going into that game was if the defense wasn't able to slow down Missouri enough, you knew the offense was going to lack the skill players to kind of push back uh, the way they had been. And that's the way it played out, but I still think Georgia had a good chance to win this game if they yeah. don't turn the ball over. Yeah. And uh, that that was what was new. The offense made a couple of uh, uncharacteristic mistakes. You know, Murray had the interception late. Brennan Douglas has the fumble. And those freshman backs have played yeah. really, really well. I don't know how much you, you beat him over the head for that. No, that was, I mean, it, you know what? They'd actually, the offense had actually been a little bit maybe lucky. I don't know if lucky is the right word, but they'd been actually been pretty good with, with not putting the ball on the ground. And, um, that, that's the thing. Georgia's defense had been forcing basically no turnovers this year, but entering that game, they were still even as a team for the year in turnover margin because the offense wasn't turning it over. Right. Now they're four under. Yeah, and that's because basically both off, you know, offenses on both sides have yeah. been going up down the field a lot this year, but uh, I just think, out of all the guys that were injured, and no one wants to hear that, that the injuries are the reason, but but I think everyone knows that. I think nationally, the perception is that Georgia's dealing with, with some serious problems right now. I think yeah. Georgia and Florida, probably more than any other two teams. Who, probably luckily for themselves, play each other in a couple of weeks. But, uh, uh, out of everybody, I, I think that Michael Bennett was missed the most in this game, and the reason is Missouri laid back and played in that zone coverage so much that they kept giving that eight to ten yard completion most of the game. And yeah. Bennett would have been very, very good in the slot, more so than any of the other receivers. I, I see what you're saying, but I still say Todd Gurley. It's just he's, he's the. I mean, Douglas and Green were good, but Gurley just gives you that extra dimension. And I see what even you're even a Marshall, you know, just someone you feel like a Gurley or a Marshall was going to take something. And Break it. And I know J.J. Green broke one, but, you know, you control the clock a little bit more. And, and I, I see what you're saying. I, I don't think there – I see what you're saying. <laughs> well, I just don't think there's as much of a drop-off to Green and Douglas, and that, that's a credit to them. I think they've played really well. There's not much of a drop-off from Gurley and Marshall to Green and Douglas? Not the way the receivers look right now uh, when, you're, when you include four, five, six, seven mm. down the line. Yeah, but I, I mean, really believe that. I think Green and Douglas have played yeah, well. Gurley I, is, is, is who he is, yeah. but you're missing some very good receivers right now as well. And, and, and you've got some guys like Blake Tibbs and Kenneth Towns. Good good players, good talents, but they haven't been playing. They're not on the same page with the quarterback. Well, yeah, even Murray, even Murray said the other day that he said it was less than five times, um, which sometimes that means you can double it. Uh, but he said there were some times he hesitated to throw because he just didn't have confidence in, in those right. guys. Yet. And, and, and this is an offense that had done so much on timing. But he found Conley, he found Wooten, McGowan a few times. He didn't find Conley much, and when he did, he had a defender direct all over. I mean, it, it was uh, – There was a lot of dinks to the – Douglas and Green being two of the leading receivers tells you something. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to open that up Saturday a little bit. But, but, the, and, but it also goes back to Gentry, I think, the line. If the line blocks better, offense has a lot better. If the line blocks better, they don't have seven points – Seven points from Missouri was, gets taken off because of this. It was an awful combination because yeah. you had a little bit of a more tentative Murray and you had less time. Yeah. You had tackles that really struggled against the defense. Those, those smaller bull rushing ends are giving Georgia a lot of Yeah, trouble. you know, and that's what's strange about this season because the, the O-line has done really, really well against South Carolina, yeah. LSU, some of the bigger, more physical right. lines. But when you've right. got the, the quicker ones are the ones that have given them trouble, and, and that's the kind of line they're going to face this weekend at Vanderbilt. But, yeah. Now, How about that segue? It was a good segue, but I still want to talk about the defense because we're talking about all the offense problems. And uh, I don't know why you want to talk about the defense. Nobody's been talking about the defense. Yeah, so. right. yeah that's true. <laughs> but well, here, someone um, Sarcasm. In, someone in my mailbag today, Gentry, made a good point, and his name is Brian Grantham, but he is not related to Todd Grantham. But he was defending Todd Grantham in a way. Uh, you know Brian Grantham. 
I, I actually yes. used to work with with, yes. with Brian. Yeah. He has a nickname that I'm not going to say okay. here, but I still remember right. it. Yeah, he's probably watching this. I lied. <laughs> but he made the point that, that I kind of agreed with, and this doesn't defend, you know, take any culpability out from Grantham, but people may have raised expectations a little too high for this defense coming into the year, which is why people are getting a little maybe overly angry at, at the performance of the defense in Grantham. Now, I preface that by also saying that you do have to say the defense has been a little worse than expected and the fact they haven't shown improvement since they got through that murder road to start the season is also discouraging. That more than the – I think that – that's the thing. I think some defenses have struggled this year. South Carolina and LSU both, and, you know, really had a heck of a time coming in here and dealing with Georgia. But if you look at what they did this last weekend, LSU played – defense played great against Florida. South Carolina's defense played great at Arkansas. Georgia's defense – you're not seeing that same kind of improvement like some other teams are. And now it's it's still early. They're still young. Not having Trey Matthews doesn't help, right. you know, but it's time for the excuses to stop. If, if, I mean, if, they, yeah, they're exactly. halfway through the exactly. year, and, and at this point, if it doesn't get any better, they're going to lose a few more games. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what do you think in the, in the secondary, Gentry? I mean, the, the defensive line, I think, is playing pretty well. Uh, they're, they're playing better. And have all year. I really do yeah. believe they have. I think Amarlo Herrera has given you about what you expected. Um, Rameek Wilson, you know, he is what he is. He's, he's actually second in the SEC in tackles. He's not a difference maker, but he's making tackles. It's the secondary. What's what? The, I mean, you, you hope to get Trey Matthews back, but at this point, he's not a difference maker. You know, here, here's what the, the thing about this, this game is, as good as Missouri had been offensively, I don't think this was just a horror show for the defense. It was not their worst performance. I think they were worse at Tennessee, really, it, considering yeah. the offense you're talking about here. And, you know, they did better in the second half and this and that. But it's the frustrating thing is it, it's trends that haven't stopped. It's no right. turnovers. It's playing a little tentative, you know, not forcing, you're not, not forcing the offense into mistakes. You're not imposing your will on anybody. You're laying back, you know, it, it's the same kind of thing. That, yeah. and, and you can say it's a young defense, but – Look, they can't sign any free agents. They got who they got, yeah. and, and, they, and they've yeah. got no choice but to get better. Yeah, against Missouri, and I guess we're just trying to wrap, wrap up Missouri and, and segue into Vanderbilt finally, but it, you are right that the defense had some good moments against Missouri. The problem is is that when they weren't good, they were bad. They Missouri had 13 drives other than the, the kneel down at the end, and they scored on six of those 13, which is not the percentage you want, and they got all touchdowns. Red zones were not good. Um, and the stats looked a little bit better on paper for the defense because on those seven times they forced a punt, you know, there, there were some three and outs in there. They did well for some four. They're doing enough to say, you know, they're not terrible. There, there's, a, there's a chance, but then well, the next drive they go out and give up when, when you don't force turnovers, you, know, you are absolutely making it so tough on yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and they're giving – They're on their heel, heels all game, basically. The stat I would throw out there is Georgia's average starting field position in the that game was at its own 23rd three-yard line. Um, they did not start outside of their own 25, but, but once, I think, in the whole game. And, and you're asking your, your offense to go 75, 80 yards yeah. every single time. Mm-hmm. Uh, when everybody's healthy, uh, they were good enough to do it, and they did in a lot of games. That offense uh, played so well, but you, you're without your star power, and you were playing against a defense that was determined to not give up the big play. And, and Georgia couldn't get the big play except the one time to Wooten, and I think that you made it difficult. They had to go the whole length of the field, and that's a lot of plays. That's a lot of opportunities to fumble. That's a lot of opportunities to throw a pick, and, and it's just this is not the same offense, and the defense is just going to have to do something to help. Now you go into Vanderbilt. Uh, you it looks like another shootout. Vanderbilt, by the way, has a guy who you know not a lot of people heard about, Jordan Matthews, because he plays for Vanderbilt, but he might be the best receiver in the league right now. With, with the with – the, Sammy Watkins is in the argument, but other than that, I think he's the best receiver they're going to see all year. Yeah, I, I thought you were about to say in the league. But close yeah. um, against Georgia's secondary. Sammy Watkins was pretty good. That was pretty So you've got a you, – you've got a – you're looking at another potential shootout. You mentioned Vanderbilt has these smaller edge rushers that have given them trouble. How worried should, should Georgia be? One thing that Vanderbilt does not have that Missouri did, Missouri had that hurry up very potent offense mm-hmm. where they can run and throw and do so many different things and just score fast. And yeah. Missouri also had a lot of confidence, too. They, they came in here undefeated. The toughest thing to do is to, is, is to beat a team that's undefeated because mm-hmm. they, they, lo- they haven't lost yet and they have all that confidence. And, and 
you know, Vanderbilt has experienced some bad games so far, so I think they've been, yeah, they've lost three, uh, at all three SEC games, and there have been shootouts, got blown out by Missouri, actually. That's you know, it, interesting. And Georgia, Georgia, Georgia's defense fared yeah. better against Missouri than Vanderbilt. Yeah, so. yeah, and th- that's both of these teams' recent games, is losing at home to Missouri. And then Vanderbilt's three wins are non-conference games, or should have been blowouts, and they were blowouts. So, you know... But but it, it's got to be one of these things, again, Gentry, that Georgia has to be near perfect on offense and special teams because you can't really count on the defense. At, this point. at some point, you, you've, you've got to have the defense, the light to come on and yeah. really play well. And I don't know if this is that game, but... You feel like it was going to happen, but I, I, I almost sensed it was going to happen against Missouri. It didn't. I mean, after the first two drives, you said, well, you know, maybe, maybe they've got something. Well, I figured Missouri's offense was – it's just so different. I mean, it relative. Been, I didn't expect him to pitch, uh, to pitch a shutout, but I thought maybe they could hold him to uh, 20. Missouri's offense is what blur compared yeah. to these guys. I mean, you mentioned Jordan Matthews is a really good player. They've got some good running backs. I think the quarterbacks play pretty well. But, Austin but, Carter Samuels. Vanderbilt he can does, run a little bit. Vanderbilt does not have the kind of talent at all the skill positions like, like a Missouri did or like It'll, South Carolina did. I, I just think that – It'll come down to turnovers and special teams. On if paper, Georgia, Georgia's the much yeah, better if, team. If, if Georgia if you turn the ball over yeah. four or five times, the same thing can happen. If Georgia can largely play mistake-free. It should win, I don't know if comfortably is the right word, but convincingly. But can Georgia play mistake-free? Well, and, and they're going to have no to. No Todd Gurley still. And they're going to have to play with some fire. I mean, you, you hear in the league that the, the toughest game you'll ever play is that noon game at Vanderbilt yeah. because the atmosphere really isn't that great. It's a smaller stadium. It's early, you know, a lot. I, I think a lot of times when you go into a big stadium, when it's a real good atmosphere, the other team gets up for it too. I think Georgia's dealt with that against several teams this year, Missouri included. But you go to yeah, Vanderbilt. for Missouri, that was a great atmosphere. Even for Georgia, though, they were like a little, you know, because of the noon start. It wasn't comparable to the LSU and stuff. Right, and now you go yeah. to Vanderbilt. And it's, it's, yeah. it's tough. You're coming off a loss. You need the team to, to be up for it and play well. I mean, I, I, you're not going to have Gurley. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have Trey Matthews. It's still going to be a lot of the same things they faced against Missouri and it's going to be an interesting test for Georgia because I, I think going into the last game, I think a lot of it hinged on what Missouri could do. I think this is more on Georgia. It, it, if, they, if they show up and play well, Georgia should win this game. And I think this is going to tell you a little about about what to expect the rest of the year, on, on just how, how up they are for this game and, and how, how poised they really do play with, with still a lot of things yep. going against them and a tough team. All right, well, um, bye week next week. I don't know for sure whether or not we'll have a, a show that'll just kind of play it by ear. If not, Florida week, two weeks, definitely show then. Thanks for watching.